AstraZeneca and Oxford University are out with new data about their experimental um, coronavirus vaccine. We are joined now by Rude Dober. He is head of AstraZeneca US and the executive vice president of biopharmaceuticals. Our Anjali Kimlani, who covers pharma, is with us as well. So how are we to read this data out today? I know there's a little bit of confusion on Wall Street because there is a headline number that says, on average, it was 70% effective in preventing coronavirus. But then if you dig down into the data, there's a smaller subset where you did the dosage differently and raised the efficacy. How, how should we be interpreting this data? Yeah, so let me try to do my best in order to simplify. So in fact, we have tested two dosing regimens in, in the study in the UK and in Brazil. One was with half the dose and then the full dose as a boost. And the other one was full dose, full dose. Uh, overall, overall, it's clear that irrespective of the dosing scheme, that the uh, vaccine is highly effective. Having said that, the half dose, full dose regimen had an efficacy up to 90%. So that's the first good news, because if you have a half a dose, in principle, you can you can vaccinate many more people than we originally planned. So that's the, the first good news. The second good news is that irrespective of the dosing, uh, dosing scheme, clearly no one got ill in such a way that they had to go to the hospital or that they were developing a severe di disease, including death. So overall, I think that the data set is very comprehensive and, and very positive. Rude, Ajali here. And looking at that difference of dosing, what does that translate to for the U.S. trial? Because, of course, that is uh, what will really impact our uh, audience and our population. So will that shift any at all? And also, did the pause in the trial affect how you can go forward with the U.S. trial? Yeah, let me uh, try to update you where we are from a U.S. perspective. Uh, so the U.S. trial uh, will have more than 30,000 participants. Uh, at the moment, we have vaccinated roughly between 10 and 11,000 uh, uh, people. So later in the week, we will engage with the FDA, where we are going to show them the data. Also, the publication we are expecting to have later in the week as well, so that everyone can see the full data set we have announced this uh, this morning. And then, of course, based on the on the on the interaction with the FDA, we will decide whether we are going to add an additional arm in the U.S. study with a half 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 dose and then a full dose as a, as a as a boost. So let's 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 wait and let's be a bit patient. But we will engage with the FDA in the course of this week. One of the other things that has been pointed out is the trial design has been a little bit different. We've, of course, talked so much about uh, health disparities as a result of this virus. Can you explain a little bit more about uh, what you're doing in the trial to really address that? Yeah, that's a, another excellent uh, question. So we are performing trials across the world. Uh, I've already mentioned the UK, uh, Brazil, but also in South Africa, in Japan, and in the United States. And in the United States, uh, we are including a, a high percentage of the minority groups, the African Americans, the Hispanic, in order to make sure that we can make an assessment that the vaccine is effective across differences in ethnicity as well as differences in age. And, and Rude, on a related note, um, I know that AstraZeneca and, and Oxford have said that they would provide the vaccine at low or no cost to some areas of the globe. Also, of course, the vaccine you're developing doesn't have some of the same um, distribution challenges in terms of temperature necessities as the other. What are the implications if, say, in the United States, the tougher vaccine and perhaps more expensive vaccines are being distributed? I'm talking about a hypothetical case in which the Pfizer vaccine, BioNTech vaccine is widely distributed. And then in the developing world, it's your vaccine. Are there any implications where one type of vaccine is widely distributed in one geographic place and another in another geographic place? Now, let, let me first take the opportunity to say that we are extremely happy that multiple vaccines are available for so many people around the world suffering from the fear of a COVID-19 infection. We need to have more vaccines available. So that's 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 the first uh, thing. The second piece is we're not competing uh, among each other. We are competing uh, uh, against the virus. And as such, I don't believe at all that only the, the AstraZeneca vaccine will only be applicable in, in low income countries. I think this vaccine is highly suitable for people in the United States as well as in Europe, but equally it's highly suitable 
for 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 uh, participants in in developing countries. The storage is indeed very easy. A fridge is enough in order to secure the stability of of the vaccine. The distribution uh, as a whole is 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 very simple. So we feel bullish that this vaccine uh, can uh, can help so many people around the world in order to make an end about this terrible crisis, not only from a from a health perspective, but clearly also from an economic perspective. Uh, on a little bit of a lighter note, this is, in fact, a, a really great uh, example of when companies are congratulating each other and, and the whole uh, industry seems to be working together. Um, how do you separate that, you know, when you're talking about the different types of technologies, knowing that one has a benefit over the other? Is there absolutely no competition, especially looking at the global level where AstraZeneca really does have a, a large promising market? Yes, of course, we are competing. Uh, but once again, this is such an exceptional situation that we also need to learn from each other. And that means that we are disclosing our data as soon as it is available. Later this week, uh, we can expect a, a, a publication of our data in much more detail. Of course, that's important in order to create confidence in, in societies. But it's also very important to showcase this uh, towards the, the, the wider scientific audience, including our other companies. This is an exceptional uh, situation and companies, they need to work together in order to try to make an end of, of this terrible crisis sooner than later. Uh, Rude, there will be other pandemics. Um, has this situation given you optimism about how the global community can attack them? And, and what do you think the biggest thing that perhaps we could do better next time from a global health perspective, the next time that there is a pandemic? Yeah, it, it's, it's a great question and a very uh, big question uh, as well. Uh, I truly believe that we need to work on survey, surveillance programs in a much more, uh, 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 in a much more condensed uh, way. What can we do across the world to pick up uh, new pathogens? Uh, equally, I think what we have learned from this terrible crisis is that we need to be ready as societies around the world, that we have platforms available. And once again, I would like to congratulate Moderna and Pfizer for the fact that they have developed a complete new platform, the messenger RNA platform. Equally, the investigators and the developers in Oxford are using the so-called chat Ox uh, vector uh, platform. I think those platforms can also be used, uh, hopefully in the future, if other uh, pathogens are, 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 are with us and in order to react even quicker than we have uh, done today. Here's hoping. Rude Dover is head of AstraZeneca US and the executive vice president of biopharmaceuticals there. Thank you so much for your time and uh, talking about obviously this very important effort. Um, we wish you all the best in that effort. Thank you so much. Thank you.